This is a recording that I did with Nadine Thompson when she came on my live show. I'm not sure if it's going to work as a podcast, but you can still listen to it. Uh, it is on YouTube, so you can go and watch it and see the slides. But it's just the chat that we had that is fun and interesting and some of the comments that we had from the audience as well. So um, let's see if it does work as, as a podcast and let me know, please. But anyway, here is the amazing uh, Nadine Thompson. Hope you enjoy the episode and I look forward to your feedback. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. It Thank has. You. It has. Um, so we met a while ago. You've been on my workshop. You've learned all about this amazing stuff on LinkedIn. And then on the very last day, you were talking to us about something called AI or artificial intelligence. And you showed us chat okay. GPT and absolutely blew my mind. And so I said at the time, um, come, come on, come on. And you, you came on and did a show, but we need to do a special chat GPT. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, first up, though, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, Nadine. So I'm um, Nadine Thompson. I run a digital marketing agency and we specialize in web design and SEO. And we help our customers to put the right content on their website so that they are found in Google. Majority of websites are mostly talking about themselves, uh, the companies, their products. But uh, nobody really searches for that on Google other than if they need directions or if they know a company name. So what they need to find on a website is the answers to their questions and solutions to their problems. And that's what I help people creating content for. Nah, absolutely fantastic. And that's the that's the trouble, isn't it? We just sort of like, oh, a website has to be all about me, doesn't it? And and it, and it, it it's not, is it? It's not. Uh, we've got a few people coming in to say hello. So let's say hello to Hexner Limited. So that's Pavel. You're, you're in your own group. Um, we've got Debbie. Um, Debbie, the, good to see you. It's the baby lady. And, yes. And then, and then this guy here. Oh, and it's great. This guy here is the most relentlessly helpful LinkedIn nerd in the world, isn't he? So uh, lovely and to see you guys. the most relentlessly best strap line I've ever seen. It's cool, isn't it? <laughs> it's cool. Well, even better than 50, the 15 minute guy. Come on. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, this is different. It's, it's totally different, but yes. Uh, absolutely. Well, so John is um, Ron Seal, isn't he? It, 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 it does exactly what he says on the tin. So that that's beauty. Anyway, so... SEO. I, I just want to just want to pick on that a second because we do start putting all this stuff on our websites about us. So what was it? I, I know we're going to go on to ChatGPT. Just literally, just in a couple of seconds, what was what's the main thing that we're getting wrong on our websites? The main thing that is we keep talking about ourselves and our products only. Um, our products are there to solve our customers' problems and we need to come from the problem angle and the questions that they have around our services to then guide us to our product and show our product or our service as the solution to their problems. No. So customers, they go to Google and if they are pretty far down the line to buying a service, yes, they might enter a certain product name, but the buying journey the funnel is much wider at the top there is lots of people that ask questions around many different things and any industry has got millions of questions i mean john for example um how do you start copywriting what is the length of a blog post what should it be what should i answer um how much is a block uh, a, a copywriter and john answers these questions amazingly well on his website um and debbie she's doing an amazing job um explaining how all these prams work and how to use car seeds and she's just got amazing videos on her youtube and that's what customers are looking for and when you know we all have gotten used to using uh, YouTube to how to fix a blocked pipe in a motorhome, for example. Everybody uses it. And yep. there's got to be people out there that provide that content. And with that, you're rising to the top. And you are doing the perfect thing when, you, when you're saying, Ashley, there's 99% 99 99 readers and 1% content creators. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> Billy is obsessed with AI. So come on, let's 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 tell everybody. First of all, what is AI? Um, it is well, AI stands for artificial intelligence. Here's my cat coming in. I thought um, you were being burgled. 
No, and I've ordered a coffee from my husband, who is, I think, there too. So <laughs> I'm just going to do a coffee swap. Thank you very much. This is working great. I'm sending him a text message to order a coffee, which is great. Um, so, so AI AI isn't quite working at your house yeah. then. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, so AI stands for artificial intelligence and uh, it started to become really big sort of end of last year. It's been around for quite a number of years, uh, but when it became a bit more mainstream, especially within the marketeers, um, and now it's just going into small businesses and bigger businesses as well. And I think they're needing to catch up. And it's uh, uh, you're using prompts to generate something. And that, that something could be a summary, that something could be an image, that something could be a blog post if you want it to. Um, but I think let's just go into my little presentation where I show what you can do with it and how to use it. That'd be Fantastic. Okay? Yeah, no, absolutely superb. And, and I've got the thing flying at the bottom. So if anybody's got any questions, drop them in the chat. And then what we'll do is we'll come to those either at the end or as we go through. Um, and um, I, I might interrupt you too as well, Nadine, if that's okay. Yes, please, please do. Um, and if anybody uh, has got any questions, I'll try to keep an eye on the uh, chat as well, and then we can have a look. So now how do I do this? I'll click on present slides. Um, now where Google Slides, your computer. So it says your computer, eh, video animations. So how do I go and present my screen? Share screen, there we go, that's easy. Um, share screen, uh, we shall go into here, share. So can you see this okay, um, Ashley? Uh, we, we can in a second, there we go, look at that. Yeah? Yep, absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna do present full screen just to let you see, present. Cool. So um, let's just step through this quite quickly. This is me and my business websites are businessimage.co.uk, which is my main business for creating websites and providing SEO services. And then Kulia is my training side of the business where I help small business owners to learn about SEO in an online SEO course. And uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you will learn little snippets about SEO. So why are you here today? have the fingers on your keyboards have you heard about chat GPT, but you haven't tried it or you have used it but you want to use it better um so which one are you never i can't see the comments just now but uh ashley if you let me know which why are people here one or two uh, there's there's all there's always a little bit of delay. So yeah, so if you've never tried it, put a one in in the chat box. If you are already using it, put a two in the chat box. Uh, Debbie's asked a question: Will we be able to watch this later? So this is going live to uh, Facebook and YouTube and obviously LinkedIn. So you just come back to one of those. Uh, Nick Burridge is already using it, um, but I guess he wants to use it more. Mandy's using it as well. Cool. So it's good, good to see that people are using it. And uh, John John Toon put a great comment in the... Oh, we can't see his comment. Oh, there it is. Um, AI is present on your smartphone on almost every time you use it to take pictures or send a message. It's using OCR that that um, that does it. So, so yeah, I think we've all been using um, AI for ages. Hands up, it uses predictive text. That is yeah. AI. Yeah. Uh, Grammarly, that is AI. There's, you know... Mm-hmm. The, we've been using it for an awful long time and i think we just we just forget that it, it's it's been around so there's a lot of people using it ian ross has, has never used it uh, debbie's never used it um but uh, yeah there's lots of ones and two so i think i think we're split i think we're split so the the big talk and if you've been on linkedin it felt like you were swamped with chat gpt in every second message starting january when people started to play around with it. And I was actually in a networking meeting this morning and there was a woman there and as soon as I mentioned ChatGPT, she started rolling her eyes and I'm thinking, you have you, you need to see the 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 chances, the opportunities you have. So you ask what ChatGPT is, it's like I found an explanation which is incredibly boring. And this is what my explanation is, is a writing and brainstorming assistant that will save you lots of time. So this is obviously especially for for small businesses who are starting to create content or want to create more content. So here is where it is, um, chat.openai.com. And first of all, is it free? Yes. Version three is free. Version four is $20 a month. I've actually upgraded now. 
and I'm using version four, I'm trialing it uh, substantially faster. Um, and uh, yeah, so the use cases. Now, I started I've got, I've got looking- a I got a question, I got a question yeah? for you here. There's, there's, in fact, there's, there's, there's a couple. So John, John Esperian saying he's tried it, um, but he hasn't found a good use case uh, in his LinkedIn business yet though. So I'm sure you're gonna come up with that one. And then um, Nick, Nick's asked this one. So a lot of AI content creation sites, do they all use the same basic program or are they all using different software? That's a great question, Nick. I don't actually know, but I think there are um, there are a different a few different models around. And I think there are software trends, uh, software developments that you can use ChatGPT technology on uh, different software platforms and different uses. So I think they're all linking in, but there might be um, other softwares available as well that do that. Oh, good question. Good question. Carry on. I, I, I won't interrupt. I, 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 okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come so, back to those again. John, um, <laughs> I mean, this is three slides about just the scratching that top of the iceberg. Um, so what can you use it for? You can find keywords. You can analyze keywords. You can write blog posts, outlines, headlines, newsletters, write the captions for Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and write emails, write paragraphs or fill blog posts. Um, you can ask it to write in a particular style. You can ask it to shorten things, improve headlines, make headlines funny, create meta descriptions, meta titles, write a full marketing strategy, summarize table data. So I actually imported a table with lots and lots of data and ask it to um, uh, write a summary and it did a perfect summary. So John, if you ever do any sort of um, questionnaires or um, where you have a lot of data to look at, you can just put that whole table into ChatGPT and it write up a summary um, on the outcomes of that table. You can ask it to write code. Um, I've seen people writing full apps with it. You can write HTML. Um, you can generate tables. Um, you can generate build lists. You can improve the spelling. And you can also use it in foreign languages. So I've created text in German with it as well. Um, and the improved spelling thing, that's one of these things I have. I'm working on a website at the moment and their style was to use everything in lowercase. So every single text, including the first letter of the sentence was all in lowercase. And obviously that irks, that can be quite um, annoying to people who value spelling. So I've just copied the text, put it into ChatGPT and said, go and rewrite this with correct spelling. And it's just done that and it saved me lots of time going through everything manually. Um, wow. So any other questions? <laughs> just now? Um no, we're, we're right. We're right for questions at the okay. moment. Um, Mandy's Mandy's just said uh, she thinks it's important to weave personalization and stories into any AI content that's being used, so to keep it you keep you unique. Yes, the the thing with ChatGPT is never to copy and paste, um, unless it writes something so good that it could have come from you. Um, I use it as an assistant, um, as a starting point, as a brainstorming and everything, but. I never copy and paste. And also any text I have written that uses a chunk of ChatGPT, I run it through a uh, software that checks for plagiarism and things like that. So how to use it? So first of all, you talk to it like a person. And this person can also remember what's been said. So you can refer back to already generated content and you can give it very detailed instructions. And this is how I use it. So get a result first and then improve on the result by providing more instructions. So you then give it uh, more information on where to take what you're wanting to create. So I've got an example now, as small business owners, no doubt you know about blogging and how valued it can be for businesses. So um, I know John that you are um, amazing at writing blog posts and I have written so many now as well for clients and for myself. Um, but when somebody has never done this before and they don't have the funds, um, for them, it's just a great thing to get started and, and get some ideas of what to blog about. So they can create, a, what, what we're gonna do in the example is create uh, some ideas, create an outline, create a first paragraph, create a LinkedIn caption and write an email newsletter to promote it. Um, so this is the first one. So I kept it around bookkeepers, Ashley. Is that um, just as I an example? It. I love um, it. So this is what we want to do. Create a blog post, ideas for small business owners looking for reasons why they need a bookkeeper. So this so, is, so, so this, is ah, so this is the prompt that you actually yeah. wrote in at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. 
So now I could run this through ChatGPT, but I've actually done screenshots, uh, so it's quicker. Um, but I'm going to do a live um, uh, this, uh, example as well. So this is what I've put in there. Keep and and here you can tell it keep headline, keep it snappy and informal, or you can write keep it very professional. Um, for example. Um, so this is what it then looks like in ChatGPT, and if you want to see the software, so this is where it is. I don't know if you, no, it just presents the one screen here. So this is uh, five different headlines. I think this is jumbled up, but yeah. Uh, so this is the headlines. <clears throat> and then you can see I particularly like option three. So you can ref refer back to it, and you can then say, give me five more options. Um, and then it gives you more options around what you have, uh, what, what is created. Um, and then, what should, what would you, uh, would people expect to see in this blog post? And you can then even see, uh, especially around question three, or or why your small business needs a bookkeeper. And this is what it then generates. Um, I'm not going to read it out, um, but this generates a lot of text. So what I then this then gives me an indication of what my blog post should include. And quite often when I start a blog post, I might have my own outline, but then ChatGPT highlights a few areas that I may have forgotten. Um, and what to do, I want to summarize this only into the main words for each bullet point. So it uses that from the previous slide, and then it just puts it into that, which makes it easier for me to see. Fantastic, fantastic. So, so. I'm a bookkeeper. Um, I've been on one of Ashley's courses to be, do LinkedIn. I've read John's um, content DNA book, and now I've got to write a blog, but I don't know where to start. I've now got, oh, I can write a little bit about introduction. I can write a little bit about, I've got some bullet points. So it's given me like a recipe or, or, or something to, to just go on. I, I love yes. that. Exactly. That's really cool. And then I can say provide an outline around the headline three. So you just go back to that, use bullet points. And then it actually generates a blog post outline um, around your around these things. So um, and it's just it's got three pages here of uh, and, and every single one of them you can use as a subheadline. Um, and if you looked at this one here, not keeping track of expenses, you can then tell it generate a headline around this that I can use in my blog post. And then you can use the same thing and say, okay, how can I make this a better headline? So this would be a blog post outline. You can then copy this into a Word document or in Google Docs, and then you start filling in the gaps with your own words. Um, and then you can say, okay, create an introductory paragraph for this blog post, keep it informal, use simple language, and then it just generates things. And once you've done ChatGPT a few times, you will see a certain style emerging in its writing. And uh, so I just generally uh, remove these things and then just make it my writing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then once you've written your blog post, you need a meta description because most people forget all these things about SEO. Um, you can say, okay, write a meta, create a meta description. Now, what it does is, you know, as an SEO, meta descriptions are uh, character limited. So I'm, get, I'm telling it actually make it smaller and use only 160 characters and start with why you need. And then it just amends it and creates a usable meta description, which you can put in, in your WordPress website or your website uh, builder. And then you can see, okay, create three meta title options from a blog post, so you can then pick the best one. Um, that because uh, meta descriptions they are like little call to actions. Now, even though you can create meta description, it's not necessarily a given that Google picks yours. But if your meta description is as close as possible to what's in the blog post, Google will actually use your meta description. And if you're using good ones, then they can you they can be used as call to actions in Google for people to click click and read your blog post. And then you can tell it act like a social media manager. Um, so create a LinkedIn caption for my blog post. Include three reasons why a small business owner should come consider a bookkeeper. Include a CTA to read the blog post. And then this is what it does. It's even put the bullet points in. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. This is so clever. And the, so, so the thing is, right? 
what I'm what I'm thinking here, it's all about the instructions that you give it, the prompts that you get it, that, yeah. that you give it. So what are your top tips there? Because it's it's a bit it's a bit like when you 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 you're lost in town and you pull the window down and you, you turn around to somebody and say, do you know where McDonald's is? And they go, yeah. And then they walk off. That's not really explicit in instructions, is it? Or could you tell me the best way to get to McDonald's? Then, you know, they'll, they'll tell me, or, or, you know, if I park here, how quickly would it take me to walk to McDonald's? It's those sorts of questions that you have to ask, isn't it? Yeah. So um, as I said earlier, it's best to get started with a simple instruction, look at the result and then improve the instruction or refer back to what's been created and give it more instructions. Now, these things here, I'm using very short prompts. Your prompts, they can be really long. They can be text and text and text. You can put you can copy a full blog post from a different website into ChatGPT and ask it to summarize it in two sentences. Okay, so, so, here's, here's, so here's, 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 here's a use case here, John, if ever there was one. Yeah. So what I see is I see a lot of people going on LinkedIn. They've read a bit of a, a, a piece out of a newspaper online, and all they do is they link back. They sort of, I saw this on the news today. Very interesting read. All right. And then they include the link, which pushes them back to that website. So what they should be doing then is copying that text, drop it into chat GPT and then turn around and say, I've just read this amazing news article. Here's my summary. Mm -hmm. Is that is that a good use case for chat GPT? John, just type in yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, then that becomes your own content, doesn't it? Yes. Um, you know, as long as you reference, you know, I've just just been on the whatever website, and and uh, but but these these are my thoughts on it, and and so you can then read that. You don't have to read the whole article. You can read the summary, and then just change your thoughts on that summary. Like, oh, actually, I like you know, and and if you if you look at point number two, this is how I do this in my business. Blah blah blah. Brilliant. I love it. This is so cool. Carry on, carry on. Sorry, sorry. I should stop getting so excited. No, it's okay. So John, the next John, thing is... John hasn't written anything yet. So uh... okay, he's probably on ChatGPT now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, if you you can use it to generate newsletter headlines. Now I know that uh, for sending out newsletters, the most important thing is the headline in the subject line uh, of a newsletter. So uh, you can ask it to generate, and because it's it, it knows you're writing this blog post. Um, so it starts starts generating them and you can then see, OK, which one would be best to put into the headline of the newsletter. And then you can actually generate a newsletter introducing the blog post and I can tell it to include three reasons why and so on and so on. And then then show three reasons why a small business owner should consider hiring and include a CTA to read a blog post. So it's done that. So is this quite a more detailed instruction? So more reasons here's the reasons and then this is um the uh why they should consider hiring and um so it just generates the whole thing and then you can it's a good starting point for you to then um turn it into your own words absolutely i love it i love it so hey um, we've got we've got we've got we've got john uh found that the free version doesn't like summarizing long blocks of text not sure what the limit is for free but but yes, in okay. theory, this is a cool use case. I've been endorsed by John Asperian. Oh, that's <laughs> made no day. Um, so, so Nick, Nick, Nick is is going one better. Um, it, it, if it can give me LinkedIn ideas, the next question is: Can it play the guitar? Yeah, I don't think I don't think we're there yet. Um, can but it, it, could, it, it can can Chat GPT play the guitar? No, but it can write me a song, couldn't it? Yes, it can. Uh -huh. um, so the next thing I've got an additional example. So if you're starting out a business or if you uh, want to explore different target audiences, you want to um, address uh, your content to or your product, um, you ask it which group of people might be interested in buying ABC, uh, what you're selling. So and then it generates, a, a, it finds a list of um, target audiences that you can be basically start uh, marketing to and I think this is a great way to, especially when you're when you're starting out with your marketing and your business, um, to find audiences that you haven't thought of. 
and the more in, uh, information you give it in the prompt so for example if you're selling uh, bikes for girls it would then uh, generate a list um, of who you can market to so it's it's quite cool um, wow so want to learn more so this is just a little bit about me so i've got my main business is business image um we do web design as your blogging done for you and then coolia this is my training side um actually if you join you can have the keyword research done for you and you can learn what to blog about and improve your own website and you do it all yourself apart from the keyword research we do that for you um i run something called the seo club um I'm just going to do this quite quickly, understand everything you need about SEO. It's 50 lessons delivered to you and on a weekly basis, once a week on Monday morning, you get a tiny lesson sent to you by email um, and you can then log in and watch videos and actually it tells you exactly what to do on your website and where. Um, Keyword research is something that ChatGPT can help you with, with getting keywords. Um, and then we run these keywords through professional software. And quite a lot of times when people um, do uh, write for um, their website, they're using keywords that they have no chance to rank for. But with our software, we can tell you how many people per month search for certain thing and how um, if, if somebody actually has a chance to rank for this subject. And we go one step further, we tell you the exact blog title to blog about um, as well. And this is, I'm just gonna step through, there's just a lot of things to learn. And if anybody wants to make a screenshot of this, um, I've got 30% off. Um, and uh, use ChatGPT30 to, um, if you want, if you're interested, and it's on the website, coolia.com. Um, and uh, some success stories of what we do now when um, the, the chat GPT is really important for the content creation, but uh, always make sure you um, put your own spin on it. So we started working with a construction company and we lifted their uh, visitors from that to that. And people might not get excited about 800, but they're only looking for 40 customers a year and that 800 times 12 um, to find 40 customers is a good number. And um, another company here, so they are they only had 3,000 clicks a month from Google and now, uh, or sorry, 800, and now they have that many clicks um, uh, in Google. So it's, that's mm -hmm. basically what we do. The, the SEO, we, we do it for you, Perfect. or we can help you to learn how to do it. And now... Um, there is something else. So before we go into the q and &E, I'm going to stop sharing and uh, I'm going to show you something else. I can see if I can try and share my... Um... Chat GPT and do it for real. Yes. Cause, that cause was... the, thing, the thing is that, that, that I, I can't get over every time I use it is how quick it comes back and you can see it writing. It is just so clever um entire screen i'm gonna do that that's easier so because i can then show you something else so i hope you can see my screen now and see myself um <clears throat> so chat gpt you see this okay we certainly can yep so uh john um do you have a blog post we should summarize let's just have a look experian is it uk i think i'm not sure is it dot com I bet if you just write helpful nerd, uh, help, re there, relentless, uh, there, there he is. Look at that in, in, in all his so, glory. John, I'm just going to lift one of your blog posts. Um, I'm just going to copy this whole lot in here. And just to show you, let's wrap up, go to here. And all I do is summarize this blog post in short bullet points. Yeah, how can it do it that quick? <laughs> that is just incredible. So that's just uh, an example, yeah. Um, I've also done uh, like data summaries as well. So I'm not sure where did I put this? Did I put this in here? But it's you basically copying. Um, let me just find this for you. Put this on the other screen. 
So what, while you're searching for that, then I've got a question. Mm -hmm. I record a video and I've now got the um, transcript. Could I yep. put that into chat GPT and get it to put more meat on the bones? Yes. So, so I, I could do a two minute video that's a couple of hundred words long. And then that could end up a couple of thousand words if I. Yes. So basically, you can take your um, video uh, transcript that you can, I mean, I use Loom all the time, and the transcript, uh, you can just copy that in and just say, create a, a, a readable blog post around this. I like that idea. I like that. So um, the thing is, you know, you can do all sorts of things, you know, write a poem about LinkedIn, and then it just does... <laughs> it's a bit silly um but yeah there's that many things and, and it, it saves what you've done so here for example I've, I've done this for a client um and it saves your your chats in here um we were talking about uh somebody that sells lavender soap uh blog introduction headlines um you know just some similar examples that i've done uh in the presentation just now. Um, the other thing I was going to talk about is DALI. I don't know, has anybody heard about DALI before? Yeah, this is the um, turns words into um, images. Into images, yep. Yes. So it's the same website. It's called labs.openai.com. Um, and uh, you basically give a prompt. Uh, Ashley, come on, give me a prompt for an image. Uh, guy with a yellow T-shirt playing guitar, playing the red guitar. Obviously handsome, handsome and good looking, chiseled and young. So this one gives you 50 credits per month for free. Yep. And um, it generates four images and you can then say, OK, I like this one. And then you can click on here and download it. Um, and so as you can see, I've done digital art. Uh, sorry, I need to stop that back and I shall uh, make it photo like so this would be a photograph uh, so obviously digital art you can also do impressionistic style or whatever you want a so Picasso or, style or something yeah pixel art so here's some images now when you use DALI so you can buy credits um, and they are incredibly cheap. So 115 credits for $15. So that is buttons. Um, so, so, so let's just, let's just the, the, the guy, the guy um, in, in the middle, look, looking up to the sky, we can see his specs and that on. This is not a real guy. No. This, so, so that that's that's not a photo that it's found. It's actually just generated that. Yes. So there's no so copyright on that. Uh, no, but with DALI, the terms and conditions say that you must keep this logo in place. Now, I've gone quite far down the rabbit hole, and I use Midjourney. I don't know if anybody heard about it. That, that's that's to another level, isn't it, Midjourney? Yes. Midjourney uses a chat platform called Discord, and I've got, uh, I think they've only got a paid version. But again, it's, it's cheap as £120 or so per year. Um, so... You need to put in a prompt. So imagine uh, a photo. A photo of a super cool guy. So, and then it starts generating four images. And as you can see here, you, this is um, the, the version one, two, three, four. If you wanted to use this one, you click on new one and it generates a large version of this. And if you want to see variations of this one, you click V1 and it generates four versions of this. And right. it does it in steps. And there is no logo on here. And you can use these images for anything you want. And you don't even need to credit them as commercial use or personal use. And basically what you do is you click on it. You see which one is usable for me. Um, and then you say, OK, I like image two. You click on it. And it generates a larger version. And then you can even upscale it even further. And then you can download it. 
And Fantastic. I have used, so I was I was writing this blog article here, Future of Digital Marketing, and every single image in here is created with Midjourney. So I, I kept the robot style. Um, so marketing uh, current trends. This is about the shiny new object syndrome. Um, which things should you be using? And this is the voice search. This is about what your voice search is used for. Um, Midjourney again. So this is using video, video form for video marketing, supporting images, customer experience, um, and about data privacy. So all of these so, images are from Midjourney. So a use case for this then is when you're doing a, a, a post on LinkedIn or Instagram on goodness knows whatever, you, you want an image rather than going and try and find an image or creating it yourself in Canva, you just go to Midjourney and I, I need this. Yeah. That is just incredible. Um, John's saying that he reckons mid journey is better, um, but Discord isn't so good, but they're moving to a dedicated site soon. Um, okay. Right, let's open, let's open up the, the doors. Has anybody got any questions for Nadine, who's really um, pushing the boundaries of, of AI and using it in her business and, and helping clients as well? Because that was, that, that was pretty incredible. Um, the uh, website address I've dropped in the Facebook, but I can't actually do it into LinkedIn in but i can put it in here i think <clears throat> let's just go in there yeah there we go so if i put that up that is the um that's the dali website that um michelle was asking for so i guess if you just write dal dash e dash two then then you can do a google search with that um so when i've used uh, ChatGPT, I've used it first thing in the morning because when I go into it later on in the day, it's just absolutely crazy. So with the paid version, you can use it whenever you want. Is that is that right? Is, you, you're not, because it was struggling, wasn't it? It was yeah. struggling. It's gone substantially faster. As soon as I paid, I mean, first they had to pay up and I thought, no, nah, I don't want to pay just yet. And then when I was ready to pay, they said, sorry, we had such a big demand that we can't take anybody on. And I'm like, oh my God, the price is going to go up, but it's $20 a month, so that's totally fine. Right, so this is this is this is an interesting question. So, so can Nick actually train no. ChatGP to be like Nick? No, um, there has been an experiments has been have been done. I've read blog posts about this uh, where people copy a few blog posts. So you copy your own blog post into ChatGPT and tell ChatGPT remember the style, and you then go in and add another blog post from that you have written, and you see remember the style. And then you say, OK, now create a LinkedIn caption using the style you have remembered um, on this subject. And uh, I think it's a bit hit or miss. Um, um, I think the person who tried it, and it's somebody I value very much, they, they didn't get very far with it, the style. Um, I think every chat you open is, again, a new blackboard with nothing on it. Um, so you can't train it in general, but you can train it for a conversation. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And I and I think and Nick, and you you totally get this because people buy from people who they know, like, and trust. And if you start turning into somebody else, you're not the Nick. And then when I meet you in real life, you're a totally different Nick to the relationship that I've had with you from 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 your writing. So, um, and, and you're Nick, you're 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 on it with this with this create creativity. So I think you're a bit like me you're going to use it as prompts you're going to use it for research and stuff like that is that is that a fair comment to make um nadine yes uh -huh. it's uh for for research i mean the thing is as well the the danger with chat gpt is just to copy and paste what's there but it just needs to be you need to reread it you need to see is there something that you know something might be biased they provide biased information so um always make sure that uh, whatever it generates, you you look for factualness and correctness. Yeah, and and, and I guess that the the most important thing is getting those prompts right, isn't it? Because it is, whatever you put in is what they're going to get back out. So you you get out what you put in. Yeah, but it's it's not really. Um... You shouldn't really worry about the prompts too much because the important thing is to get started and then improve on your prompt because it will give you something on a simple prompt and then you say, okay, that's a good start. Now you refer back to it and say, now go deeper into this section. And then it just 
it's it's like an assistant, which is is really really well. It's really good. Yeah, and I think that was one of your very first slides. Is think of ChatGPT as um, a, a prompt assistant. So I think that's absolutely superb. Um, I'm just going to show the um, example of the, uh, the the survey results thing that I've done because um, I did uh, 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 a questionnaire around um, when I did my postgraduate diploma in digital marketing. And uh, so basically it doesn't have any personal information in here. So I've segmented the answer. So what I can do is I can copy this and go into chat GBD, I need to share, uh, present, share screen, share screen, entire screen, there we go. So I can show you, let's just go out of here. So the Excel spreadsheet is here, um, which does appear in the background. Yeah, so this is the questionnaire. So I've segmented that already by answers. Um, so what I can do is I can copy this. Can you see this okay, yeah? Yep. Okay, um, and put it in here. So I'm just gonna go in up here into this chat. Summarize the findings in this table. And I'll just copy this in and then so is it is it using CSV to work out what it no, all means? No, I just I just copied um, this, and it turns it into whatever it needs. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so I, I was I I sent somebody um, some questions th that that I wanted answering, and I'd written them in one format, dropped it in a different format, and it just became one great big long sentence. Um, and and that's what that's what this table looks like. But obviously, ChatGPT doesn't see it as one big long sentence. It sees yeah. it as a table. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this this is correct. Indicate that most respondents find a wedding photographers. That is amazing. That is amazing. So, it's 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 got interesting use cases for for many different aspects and you know you can tell it to use uh you know create a headline for this uh, use camel caps okay and then uh, camel caps means every first letter is a yep. capital and then uh, recreate without camel caps because in general i think it just creates camel caps all the time um without camel case recreate without Camel case, um, and it you know I can't stand camel case, so I always have it rewritten. Um, uh, provide uh... so they're they're quite good. They come as as it can generate really good CTAs as well. And um, so it's it's somebody, if somebody hasn't got much experience in writing, um, I mean, things like that will come natural to any content and copywriter, uh, but people who are starting out um, and need to generate content, it's just invaluable. No, it's absolutely superb. Um, Ian's come up with a question. So hi, Ian, how are you doing? Um, someone told me that ChatGPT gets you uh, to second st draft state, so you still need to check out the facts. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. So the version three uses data up to 2021, I believe. And then ChatGPT4 is a bit more um, up to date, as far as I'm aware, and is also faster. And apparently, it's a better language model. Um, uh, have I seen much of a difference? I'm not so sure, but um, yeah, it's faster. Definitely, it's faster. And you need no, to. So, second draft state. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've seen people who use ChatGPT to generate full blog posts, um, and then they just grammar check it and post it online. But there are website, the for example, originality. Checker, um, and there is where is it? Originality is kind. Of, I think it's originality. AI, and 
it's not. Oh, that is. So you can then check if your blog post was plagiarized um, or if it's been written by um, by ChatGPT. Now, there is another one here that I have got. Uh, it's called AI Content Detector. Um, You're able but, to share your screen, please? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, presumed. So originality, that's a paid one, but it's very, very cheap. And um, here you can either add a URL and then you can check if the content's been written with AI and to what extent. Um, now, there are voices out there that people say um, Google's going to penalize AI content, and that's absolutely not the case um, because Google um, is about... Um, providing content that is useful for people. Yeah. And if AI content is useful for people, if it's useful and relevant to your users, it doesn't matter how it's been created. Um, and it's not going to get penalized on the basis that it has been written with the help of AI. No, and it's actually, it's actually in the Google uh, guidelines and uh, I've researched that because there was a lot of that around that in, in, in LinkedIn. And people say, well, Google's going to penalize you and it's like, mm. I haven't seen any evidence of that. And they actually mention that in their guidelines. Uh, Google's not going to penalize you for having more stuff, uh, more content yeah. on your website, are they? Surely not. Surely mm -hmm. not. Um, Nadine, you've been absolutely amazing today. That It, it, it is absolutely mind-blowing. I hope everybody goes away and has a play and starts thinking about how we can use ChatGPT. Got a few more questions for you. The first one, right, my thought, my initial um, experience of AI was a guy called Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? And he made a movie, um, and and we're all now worried about that. And the, the name of the movie's gone out of my head, but you know, you know the movie I'm talking about. Is that Terminator. ever going? Terminator, of course. Is that ever going to happen? What do you mean? That the AI bots will overtake us and then start blowing us up and then turning no. into metal machines. I mean, there's always going to be technology that takes over people's jobs, but this AI stuff here, that's only going to be helpful in the future. And you still need a brain to connect the dots and to create things that make sense to people. Um, if you just generate gibberish for the sake of it, it's never going to live. Um, you still need to use your your skills to actually produce something. And it's a tool. People should see it as a tool. Um, and yeah, that's the main thing. ChatGPT so far in my business has has prompted me <laughs> to buy a third screen. So I have got two work screens here, and I've got ChatGPT screen here. Wow, wow! So 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 basically, that that third screen is your digital writing assistant yeah it's all my comms my email my calendar and things but chat gpt lives in there and it's open all the time i don't have to search for it no fantastic i love it i love it um how can people get hold of you linkedin just enter my name nadine thompson um you can find me on instagram look for the dot seo dot club you can look uh, go to the Kulia website and if you are interested in an seo course uh chat gbt 30 is the coupon code if you're interested and then business image if you're looking for any sort of website work seo work just you find me there awesome awesome uh nadine thank you so much uh you're for coming welcome. on and spending a bit of time with us thanks to everybody for all your amazing comments and questions and stuff like that um and uh yeah have a fantastic weekend everybody uh you thank too. you very much indeed nice cheerio now Bye. Bye bye. It's a button here. You get out what you put in.